Welcome everybody to Firewatch, trying a game that's new, preferably an empty one. Drinking coffee. Mm. And hoping I didn't need a restart before that I came here. Campo Santo, I went there when I was a kid. Hopefully my mic's not too loud, I can turn it up a little bit, so I talk kind of quietly, I mean. I'm not Markiplier. I don't need a sound booth to scream at my screen. Oh. Yes, he's funny. She's about your age, late 20s, laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are at drink with your pals. Definitely a broacher. You're drunk. Hmm. So, what's your, you know, major? You, you're pretty. Well, I mean, I am drunk. You're pretty, she says coolly. You are not. You are a future hangover. What? You reply confused. Someone should buy you a cheeseburger, she says. She flags out a waiter, and one week later, a waiter, and one week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. The end. I love this game. Baby! I'm no longer alone! <laughs> Don't look at me like that. Oh. Oh god. I probably should have restarted before this, but as long as I kind of move slowly and steadily, I'll win the race. Okay, I can also use my controller. Where is it? There it is. Let's see how this. Sometimes I think it's better to... Mm. Yeah, it's, the game wants me to use the mouse. The game has spoken. Okay. Um, left mouse to use objects. Good advice. Oh, duh. This game is not graphically demanding, like, I don't know why... Anyway, I'm gonna stop bitching. I am drunk. This is my truck. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. The game's pleasant. That's my dog crying, because my cat bit it. You move in, you share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. This sounds a lot like my real life. Julia wants to get a dog. Change that to a cat and it's dead on. There's a scruffy undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badass. Well, I mean, she loves the beagle, so... Where's my mouse? There it is. She names him Bucket. Bucket's a good dog, and a week later you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him, too. Nineteen seventy nine, you talk out on the deck, it's summer, nine thirty PM and the heat still radiates off the high desert. What do you think about kids? she asks. Kids? They're not very smart or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some, uh, if you and I have some. A couple little idiots. <laughs> That'd be pretty good. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably the best that their parents are hitched. You say she's absolutely right. Not recommended for inexperienced hikers. We're going to start here at Thunder Cannon. Canyon. Don't make fun of me. 
We're gonna head over here to Thunder Thighs and then down to Two Forks Lookout where we're gonna crash into Cheesecake Creek. Now, let's see. It's Thursday night, and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets in between the sheets. You get mad. You ignore her. I get mad. You call her an inconsiderate asshole. She tells you to fuck yourself and not be such a baby. You call her selfish. She knows you mean it, and it hurts her feelings. Julia still likes to draw. She plants from her research. She draws plants. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. You pose and flex like a He-Man. You frolic like a Victoria's Secret model. Obviously. Julia was right. You are very pretty. <sighs> yep. Baby! I love you. Yeah, I'd... I think I might be having to take my baby out for breakfast. Honey, this this electronic relationship's pretty important too, don't you think? It's, it's only 9.30 in the morning, baby. Place the space bar to climb over. doesn't give us much time. Enjoying the summers. You and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. It's a festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Oh, man. Bucket gets kick. Ba 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 fuck, it did a dog. Julia yells. She gets flustered. She has trouble speaking when she's stressed. You confront the attacker. You scare him away. You beat his goddamn face in. Well, you fucking kick my dog. Your arm gets cut up, but you beat the guy to a pulp. You don't feel very tough. You cry your, you cry your eyes out before the cops show up. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say okay. You don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. Hey, puppy. You walk by the river with Bucket. I need to call you Bucket. This is my puppy, Monroe. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale's in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job. Associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. Convince her not to take the job. Agree if she commutes back and forth. Oh my god, that's not right, man. I'm putting myself first. Oh, I want her to have the job, so I guess I'll I guess I'll tell her to commute. Brutal. You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that'll be hard, but she, but she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up if that's what she wants. She agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times each semester. Julia is sent home from Pale. Uh, Yale on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. She was found crying in the stairwell. You say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it. You make macaroni and drink wine and try to forget about it. Oh, we gotta, we need counseling, for sure. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She is 41. You both decide to keep it a secret for now. Fuck, man. I'll write in my journal about it. Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to the university.
Julie's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She's devastated. She's sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days, you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children little idiots. Other days, you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes, she goes into a panic, believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family they're crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. Baby, if you get dementia, I'm going to wipe your butt for you. Only if I have to. Okay. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple months. You decide to move her into a full-time care facility. You are determined to take care of her by yourself. Yeah, I'm not ready to give up yet. I have another video card that I'm going to be getting soon. Hopefully this will make life a little easier. This game shouldn't be that bad. Hey you, don't run from me. No, I need a friend. It is impossibly hard. The worst is when you get mad at her. Like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her. She can't do anything without you. When she goes to sleep, you stay up for a few hours, drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college basketball in the winter, drinking then too. You start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you do it, you worry about her getting up and walking around while you're gone. You put a chair in front of the bedroom door. You trust that she sleeps like a rock. Oh my god, either way, I'll trust her. You go to the same bar at the boring end of Pearl Street. It's nice there. Over time, you tell Sheila, the bartender, everything. It's a huge weight off. You're home and in bed by 1 a.m. a couple of nights a week. You look forward to those nights. 1989. One night, you're stopped at a DUI checkpoint. You blow a point one zero and are taken to jail for the night. You consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister-in-law, Susan. Julia's parents take the next plane from Australia. They can't believe the state your house is in. Then they tell you that Julia is coming to live with them. You don't argue. You say you'll visit soon. A few weeks go by. Summer is coming and you see an ad for a paper in the job. I mean, a job in the paper. <laughs> you take it. I really like the direction games are going in. It's no longer about... I was saying this earlier, so I'm kind of repeating myself verbatim from what I was saying to my partner, Sam. But it's no longer about packing as much action. Puppy! Packing as much action into a game as possible. I'm sorry. I'll mute my mic when she's doing that. But now, it's about atmosphere and, and like story. and It's really turned a corner. Now, this is a Canadian joke, but anybody remember watching Red Green? I don't remember the character, but he was a Firewatch guy, and he was insane. And he would always draw the comics and depict Red Green as a beaver and depict himself as super muscular, and he'd always get all the women. He basically just lives in a Firewatch tower by himself, and yeah, he's a nutcase. I honestly th think Hello, I could do this, tower. as long as I had Sam. I'm going to mute my mic because um, of the dog again. I'll, I'll just try to go on and off. Two Forks Tower, this is Thoroughfare Tower. Come in. Hold left shift to activate the radio. 
fuck, I have to do it the whole time. Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? People take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine, then can I... I'm going to be leaving for breakfast forever? in a second. Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. I'm assuming I can save here. You've killed three ex-husbands who are lying against the norm. No one home can stand you. Definitely this one. Okay, uh, you've killed three husbands. You're a black widow and you're just out here until the heat dies down and then you'll kill again. Ooh, very good. Bravo, Henry. Okay, I sleep now? Not quite. Now you. Okay, good night. Bye. Let's see. I don't know anything about you. But nine times out of ten, folks out here simply got dumped. Huh, is that it? Close. Good night. <laughs> good night. Welcome to the job. <laughs> I like this game. Um, sorry I'm gonna have to cut this short. But, eating is pretty damn important. I'm gonna play this game a little more later on. Good afternoon. <laughs> you probably slept like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're ready. Answer a radio call. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to figure out how to turn this game off. Jesus Christ, man. Alright, it just saved. I saw it. Um, save game. And then quit to desktop. So, I'll be back. Thanks for watching.